If you live near the Severn Estuary or the Lower River Wye or the River Usk, then you'll know about the mud that lines the banks of the rivers. This is not ordinary mud, this is really gloopy tidal mud. The mud washes down from Wales and wherever the rivers rise from, but then because the rivers are tidal, the water pushes the mud back up and down and up and down, and over the years it becomes a special type of really sticky, really horrible mud that can be really dangerous. The mud can look like it's quite stable. It can look like normal mud, normal earth, and SARA, Seven Area Rescue, has had a number of rescues where people have gone out onto the mud and have then got stuck. As you can see by this chap, it's very easy to walk out from the bank onto the mud. And to start with, there's lots of little rocks and the going is okay. And then you don't have to go very far onto the mud before you start to get into really sticky mud and it becomes very difficult to move. What will happen very quickly is that one of your feet will get stuck. It will get stuck in not very much depth. It's only maybe a couple of inches into the mud and then suddenly you can't move your foot. When that happens, the worst thing you can do, what you really must try not to do, is to put your other foot down to push that first foot out. Because what will happen then is that your second foot gets stuck in the mud and suddenly you're completely trapped. So what you need to do, as this guy is demonstrating, is you need to spread the weight out. And that means you need to get down into the mud. And you need to accept that you're gonna get dirty, you're gonna get mud all over your knees, or all over your backside, or both, all over your hands. But if you spread the weight out on the mud, then you can nearly always get one foot free of the mud, and then you can start to move. So as you can see here, he's moving back towards safety, back towards the bank, with all his weight spread out, using his backside, using his arms, sometimes he'll be using his elbows, and he can get back to the, to the bank. If possible, you can use some vegetation. So you can see he's using the grass, standing on the grass, or using the weight of the grass, where the mud is a little bit firmer, he's got something to grab hold of, and eventually he gets to the point where he can stand up, having rescued himself out of the mud. It's really important if somebody is stuck in the mud and you're trying to rescue them that you don't become stuck yourself. It's very easy to get all excited and think, oh, they're in terrible danger, I need to get in and help them. And suddenly you've got two people stuck in the mud. So the rescuer stays on the safe bank up with the grass and he pushes out the stick as far as he can. He reaches out so that the guy stuck in the mud, the casualty, can grab the stick and then he pulls him back onto the bank and he keeps moving backwards. You can see the rescuer moves backwards, pulling the casualty up well onto the land. What you don't want is that the casualty grabs hold of the rescuer as soon as he can and pulls him into the mud. And then again, you've got two casualties in the mud and nobody to rescue them. And the mud in the tidal parts of the Severn and the Wye, etc., has all sorts of horrible contaminants in. It has bacteria in, it has chemicals that have washed off the fields, it has all sorts of poisonous stuff. So it's really important, as soon as you get out of the mud and back to some sort of civilization, that you wash the mud off. 